Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbert Ham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I had the opportunity to introduce our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr., who's going to be sharing a message this morning, Faith Fulfilled. I know you're going to enjoy the message, so you want to go ahead and grab a friend and grab a co-worker and let them know that the Word of God is about to be preached. You know what time it is. Let's go.
Trustee John McQueen to our official staff, First Lady Mrs. Viola Ham to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family and to our guests. To those of you who can, will you please stand for the reading of God's Word. I invite your prayer for meditation to the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. If you have it, say amen. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil or the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs or of the children's leftovers. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil or the demon is gone out of thine daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil or the demon gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. You may be seated. Speak, Lord, and help us to listen. For I ask it in your name. Amen. Subject for this morning Faith fulfilled. Faith. Fulfilled. Have you ever wondered what grips the Lord's attention? Have you ever wondered what grips the Lord's attention? 
What is it that he is excited about? Our text today reveals precisely the answer to that question. God is excited about faith. Faith, my brothers and sisters, always gets our Lord's attention. If you want to get through to God, faith will do it. Now, this account is of the Syrophoenician woman and her encounter with Jesus. The gospel, according to St. Matthew, records the delighted exclamation of Jesus regarding this encounter with her. He said, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Mm -hmm. Now, she exhibited a faith in which Jesus delighted. Why? Because this woman got his attention. Now, as we look at this passage today, let her living example of faith reveal to us a faith that not only pleases God, but a faith that receives his grace. I wonder if you're praying with me. Point number one, a revelation of faith. A revelation of faith. Now, the Bible tells us in verses 24 and through uh -huh, 26, and from thence he arose, that is, Jesus arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil or the demon out of her daughter. Now we see, my brothers and sisters, in this woman, a revelation of faith. It is the kind of faith which caught our Lord's attention and with which he was impressed. She becomes the living example of this faith. And if we look closely at her, I believe we will see a faith which can be ours as well. Now, our text says that the Lord had come into the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, this was a Gentile region and as such was abhorrent to many of the religious Jews. Jesus had already encountered their hypocrisy and had confronted them with the vanity of their tradition. The Jews were so worried about ceremonial 
ceremonial uncleanness that they miss the weightier matters of the law. To those Jews, this Gentile region was unclean as well. Add to that, this Gentile woman, being both a Gentile and a woman, were double strikes against her. The Gentiles were referred to as dogs by the pious and self-righteous Jews. A woman were even lower in their estimation. Yet this woman came to Jesus because she had faith. It was a special, special kind of faith. It was a faith, listen now, born out of need. She had a sick daughter. Actually, the text says her daughter was demon-possessed. Now, because of that, this woman was compelled to flee to Jesus as the only hope for her daughter. She had a need, and she believed Jesus had the answer. Now, it seems that God uses the situations of real need in our lives to draw us to himself. It's true that whenever things are going well in our lives, when there is no apparent need, that we become rather self-sufficient. It is as if we have all things under control and don't need any help from anyone. This self-sufficient spirit can actually hinder our relationship with God. Listen. Sometimes it takes a real need to arise in order to turn our attention back to the Lord. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a desert. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a troubled sea to turn our attention back to the Lord. Can I get a good amen? amen. I wonder if you're praying with me. Amen. Now because of her need this Salafonician woman came running to Jesus when she heard that he was in their area. Faith was born in her. Listen now, because of her need. Now she not only had a faith born out of need, she had a faith which resulted in action. When she heard Jesus was in town, she came to him. In other words, she acted on her faith in Christ. She came, she came and fell down at his feet. And asked him to intervene on behalf of her daughter to cast the demon out of her. Now, in the tense of our text indicates 
that she now only asked once, but kept on asking. Actually, she was pleading with Jesus. Her appeal was passionate. She was definitely involved in doing something about her faith. Listen, if you please. Faith resulting in action is the only kind of faith that is real. James tells us that faith without works is dead. Now, if our faith does not lead us to act, we simply, we're simply fooling ourselves. What we claim to be faith is not faith at all. It may be a misty cementation or cementation or ideal, a misty ideal, but it is not faith. It is not faith. True faith, biblical faith, leads us to action. Now the idea that we can divorce faith from action, that we can make it simply an intellectual thing, is foreign to the scriptures. Listen, when faith, true faith, comes to birth in our hearts. It moves us to do something about it. That's the kind of faith which we see demonstrated in this Sarophonician woman. It's the kind of faith which always catches the attention of Jesus. I wonder if you're praying with me. Point number two, an illustration of persistence. An illustration of persistence. Now, this woman was not only a revelation of faith, she was an illustration of persistence. Indeed, persistence is one characteristic of true biblical faith. Many times in scripture, we are exalted to be persistent with God. We are exhorted to pray and keep praying to ask and to keep asking to seek and to keep seeking to knock and to keep knocking. Persistent is a characteristic of true Biblical faith. We have the story or the parable of a woman and the unjust judge which Jesus gave us as an illustration of the need for persistence in prayer. Persistence is a quality highly valued by the Lord. We see it here in this woman. She came to Jesus and kept making her case over and over, over and over. She pled with the Lord to do something for her daughter. Her appeal, listen now, her appeal 
was passionate and persistent. And I'm sure she caused a ruckus. Uh huh. Now, Matthew's account of this incident, we are told that the disciples were bothered by the persistent pleading of this woman to the point where they asked Jesus to send her away. I'm sure when your daughter is demon possessed and your last hope is before you that you do not care how much for protocol this woman was desperate uh -huh, and she was and she was committed to whatever it took to get help Woo! for her daughter. Indeed, she was persistent, my brothers and sisters, but her persistence was tempered with humility. She did not come to Jesus in arrogance. It is certain that she knew who she was and what the Jews thought of her. Now she was coming to a Jew and presenting her case before him. While she may have been loud, I believe that she exhibited a certain humility of spirit. You see, she fell. Woo! She, she fell at the feet of Jesus acknowledging him as the Messiah she took the position of a worshiper as she in effect prayed for her daughter her humility is further exhibited by what follows Listen to verses 27 and 28. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and the casted unto the dogs and she answered and said unto him yes Lord Woo! that's what you need to say to the Lord turn to your neighbors and neighbors that's what you need to say to the Lord you ought to tell him yes she answered and said unto him yes Lord yet the dog under the table, eat of the children's crumbs or of the children's leftovers. I wish I had some help in here. Now, Jesus finally responded to her by pointing out that he had come for the sake of Israel. This is made clear in Matthew's account. Israel was God's chosen people. They were the children of God. He reminded her of that fact and of the need for the children to be fed first. To do otherwise, he said, would be like throwing all of a good food to the dogs. Now, the term Jesus used for dogs is a small term in Greek. 
Listen now. It refers not to the scavenger dogs which were despised in Israel, but to the little pet house dogs with which the children played. Now, when Jesus had given his explanation, the woman was anything but offended. Here we see a glimpse of our true humility. Her response was, yes! She accepted Jesus' characteristic, 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 or characteristic without bitterness. Obviously, she, obviously she knew that the Jews referred to the Gentiles as dogs with contempt. Yet Jesus had not used a term of contempt, but rather a term of affection. Nevertheless, the message was clear. Israel had to come first and the Gentiles after that. Her response was to receive Jesus' estimation of her. And she was not put off by it. This was a picture of humility. Whatever place Jesus would assign to her, that would be her place. And she would accept Jesus' estimation of her situation. Oh, my brothers and sisters, here indeed is a picture of persistence tempered with humility. But not only that, it is also a picture of persistence turning difficulty into opportunity. This Syrophoenician woman not only accepted Jesus estimation of her, she used his estimation as a ground for argument. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. Mm -hmm. In other words, she recognized that the food had to go to the children first. Great God Almighty. But she also realized that even the children tossed the fruit crumbs to their favorite pet under the table. Oh Lord, she wasn't asking for much, just a small touch of the master's hand. So she came and made her case humbly, but effectively she turned her difficulty into opportunity. She refused to be defeated by an apparent closed door. Oh Lord, in fact, it was not a closed door. She saw it as a door, an opportunity to walk through. Now, Jesus himself gave her hope she needed when he said that the children must be fed first. He implied that after them others would be fed after all when there is a first there is a second would this woman see that by faith and lack 
latch unto the hope he had offered her. Indeed she would. And that is what caught Jesus' attention. He remarked it to her that she had great faith. And he said unto her, for this same go thy way. The devil or the demon is going out of our daughter. Oh Lord, listen, because of the persistence and faith of this Gentile woman, she received the answer to her prayer. I can only imagine the scene which must have occurred when she got back home. Verse 30 says, and when she was come to her house, oh Lord, she found the devil, she found the demon gone out of her daughter and laid upon the bed. Oh Lord, now I'm sure there was a jubilant celebration around her household because of the deliverance of her daughter. I can only imagine the kind of release this woman must have felt to have her daughter back. It was a glorious time of faith fulfilled. Jesus, yeah, Jesus has set her free. And I want to tell you, Jesus is present this morning through his spirit to set you free. Do I have any worshipers in here? Point number three, and I'm closing now. A manifestation of grace. Yes, finally, we see in this account a manifestation of grace. You see, Jesus' ministry was a redemptive ministry. He had come not to condemn, but to deliver. The very fact that this woman came to Jesus at all would indicate this. Yes, Jesus' action, we see that grace is revealed in God's purposes. God had a purpose in his redemptive plan. There was to be the offer of his grace to his chosen people Israel. They were to be the first. But as we already stated, we're there is a first it follows that there will be a second even so there was the outstretched hand of God to a lost people oh Lord we see his grace in that outstretched hand his desire was to heal and deliver Israel he wanted them to turn to him so he could have mercy on them he did not want them to suffer but to be made whole listen God has a purpose in grace for you as well he has a divine plan for your life can you see the hand of God working in your life I hope you can let me assure you that God is at work in the circumstances of your life to bring you 
to himself if we will submit to his plan for us we will find that his grace is real but not only is God's grace revealed in God's purposes God's grace is revealed or is received by God's mercy in fact everything we receive from God is by faith and because of his mercy Jesus answered this woman's request because she expressed the faith and because he had mercy on her he will do the same for us too the Bible says that it is not by works of righteousness which we have received but according to his mercy he saved us we can work our way into heaven our works however noble and mighty are simply not enough and perfect enough to make the difference unless our righteousness has is the righteousness of Christ then our righteousness is not good enough that excludes all of us but by faith we can receive the righteousness of Christ by faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross we can receive God's grace grace is unmerited favor grace is unmerited love it is forgiveness for sin when we deserve condemnation and this is exactly what Jesus offers us and if we will surrender our lives to him and I'm about ready to take my seat yes the woman can teach us a great deal about how to approach God we must approach him in faith a faith that acts we must be persistent yet humble we must took we must look a difficulty as an opportunity for God to act and refuse to be turned away if we do these things we will be recipients be recipients of his grace and mercy listen oh Lord whatever your need Christ not only has the answer but is the answer if you will come to him in faith you will begin to experience the mighty work of God in your life oh Lord listen God's grace is sufficient for our needs God's grace is made perfect in our weakness oh Lord can I talk about God's grace God's grace is what makes heavy burdens bearable God's grace is what makes high mountains climbable God's grace is what makes deep valleys crossable God's grace is what makes painful suffering endurable God's grace is what makes big disappointments faceable God's grace is what makes lonely nights livable God's grace is what makes daily pressures manageable oh Lord God's grace has brought us 
through the valleys of loneliness. Yeah, God's grace has brought us through the veil of tears, the winds of persecution, the storms of oppositions. God's grace has brought us through the nights of despair. God's grace has brought us through the trauma of heartache. God's grace has brought us through the trials of suffering. I don't know about you, but I thank God for his grace. Because grace woke us up this morning. Grace started us on our way. We should thank God. For his grace, and we should thank God for his mercy. Why should we do that? Because his grace and his mercy has brought us. Can the church say amen? God's grace. And his mercy has brought us. I'm going to ask everyone who can to please stand. I believe that we are all members, with the exception of one's mother, Carter. My sisters and my brothers, if you really want something from God, it's going to take faith. Faith will do it. Faith in God will bring you the answer. Faith in God will bring you the, the deliverance that you need. Those of you who desire prayer, please remain standing. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, here we are. Here we are, Lord. And we're here because you told us that we would that we could come. But before I go further in this prayer, we want to thank you for your precious blood. Because your precious blood has made it possible for the Father to forgive us for all of our sins, past, present, and future. It's through your precious blood that have allowed us to come into the Holy of Holies, to come into God's very presence. And we want to say thank you. Oh God, we have so much to thank you for. 
so much. You have done great and mighty and marvelous things for us. And we want to say thank you. Many times the road got so rough. The burdens got so heavy that we felt like thrown in the towel. But we are so grateful that you came along and strengthened us and told us to run on a little while longer. Now, Lord, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you this morning. I don't know what they need, but you know, Lord, you know the very needs of their hearts. You know the very needs of their lives. So right now, Lord, touch them right now and give them the know that everything is going to be all right. Now, Lord, somebody needs a touch. Yeah, shield them, Lord, for high blood pressure. Shield them, Lord, for sugar diabetes. Shield them, Lord, for cancer in the name of Jesus. There is nothing too hard for you. Now, Lord, I just want to say thank you. Now, church, open up your mouth. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Oh Lord, I feel your presence, Lord, right now moving on my heart, moving in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you thanks. For all that you have done and for what you are continuing to do. And we ask it all in the blessed name of Jesus. For his sake we pray. Amen. Welcome back. I know you were encouraged by that word, faith fulfilled. And if you were encouraged, we just simply ask that you just leave us a comment and let us know how the word of God is impacting your life. It certainly would mean a lot to us. We want to share uh, Christ with you. If you've never accepted him as your personal savior, we want to invite you to do so now. So if you will, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me, a sinner. I recognize my need for you. I recognize that I can't do this on my own. And I recognize that God the Father has given me a gift and that if I would just accept it, I would be saved. And so Lord Jesus, I'm inviting you into my life. 
I'm letting you know that I cannot do this on my own and I need you. Please save me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you truly believe the prayer that you just prayed, the Bible says that you are saved. Acts 16, 31 says, And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And so we are excited if you did say that prayer. We want to welcome you to the family. If you accepted that, if you said that prayer, simply go to our website at www www.ebcwilmington.org and on the contact page just leave us your email and let us know that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We want to celebrate with you and we would also want to make sure that we provide you with the resources that you need in order to grow your faith, to provide you support in your newfound walk with the Lord. So welcome to the family. Stay in contact with us on our social media networks. We're on Facebook at EBC Wilmington. And we ask you to go ahead and just click that follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. And once you go ahead and just click that subscribe button. So once again, it was our pleasure to have you be a part of our online worship experience. We truly hope that your life is being blessed by this ministry and we ask that you can just continue to hold us up in prayer as we continue to do the work of the Lord. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to come and worship with us. We're located at 2200 North Claymont Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. And we would be so glad to have you and your family. So once again, thank you so much for participating and being a part. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless. <laughs>